the most professional chess software on planet Earth. Does it actually make sense to invest in buying chess-based program and does it really help you improve your chess? I'm gonna answer this question in today's video and tell you everything you need to know to decide whether you should invest in chess-based or not. What's up chess player, welcome to the journey to get master, the place where you can improve every single aspect of your chess game. Today we are looking at chess based program. Now I have to tell you in advance that chess base did provide me with the chess base 17, their newest uh, chess program which costs quite a lot and we are going to talk about it later on but they haven't influenced my opinion in any means, they haven't uh, instructed me in terms of what I should say and so on. So that's going to be my honest opinion. I have tested this program for a month now. I have prepared, uh, I have used it to prepare for my tournaments. So I really have some practical experience and I'm ready to share it with you. So you can have your own opinion and well, decide whether it's something for you or not. Now, there are a great number of functions that Chessbase has and Chessbase 17 has a lot of new functions, but there are really a few main things that you you're going to be using if you uh, buy the chess base and that uh, so many professional chess players are using and there are some new features that I really like that much in the uh, new version or maybe in, in a couple of new versions it's not like I'm buying every new one once it's out there but I do see that there is a huge progress in chess base 17 comparing with let's say chess base 14 which I used previously and let me walk you through all of the available functions here so the first thing I always use Chessbase for, just as uh, most of the professional chess players are doing, is to prepare against your opponent. Now, if you're playing OTB tournaments, of course, it's very relevant for you. If you are not, well, I really hope you are going to do that one day because online chess doesn't really give you that same experience. It's completely different emotions. I mean, I couldn't even compare it. I don't... I don't feel anything near to uh, the real tournament's uh, feelings in uh, online chess. Even if I play against uh, really top players there, against Hikaru Nakamura or Lorenzo Firuja in Title Tuesday, it's still absolutely not the same feeling as I had playing against Fabiano Carana live you know, during our game in the World Team Chess Championship. I mean, that's absolutely different. So. Let's say I want to prepare against Fabiano Carana. I'm playing against him tomorrow again. So what I need to do is first of all, get into the mega database. And if you buy the chess base mega package, I guess it's called, you get both the chess base program and the mega database 2024. And you also have an option to update it pretty much every week or two weeks, not that certain, but very, Often you can just insert the new games into it so you have the most updated version. All you need to do to prepare is to get here, this by the way, my recent opponents, and then write Caruana, hit enter, and then here you have it. There are, of course, more Caruana than just Fabiano, but that is the one we are interested in. And then we uh, we need to choose whether we want to prepare against white or black, at least that is what I always do. Let's say I'm playing as white, so I need to prepare against black. And then it sorts all of the black games that Fabiano played. And yeah, not that fast, by the way. A good rule of thumb, you really need quite a, a new computer or a laptop or PC or Mac, whatever you have. But it should be pretty strong to handle the chess base because it's not the the most, uh, the easiest uh, program to use for, for, for the computer, especially if you want to make deep analysis with Stockfish or whatever engine you might like, you really want to have quite a strong computer to, to help you with that. Now I'm going to play d4 because that's the move that I normally play. You can either make a move on the board or just choose it from the list. You see here the all of the moves that Fabiano played in this position. Of course, knight f6 is his favorite. Then you see the score that his opponents got here because the score is always from the white side. So players with the white pieces after Fabiano played knight f6 have got 42% of the, well, entire score, 100%. Well, if Fabiano plays uh, g6, which is... Yeah, hard to say because it's just eight games, so you can't really take a look at it seriously. But it shows you whether a certain move is more or less successful for Fabian. Well, let's proceed with knight f6. Now I typically play knight to f3. 
yeah, you see here a lot of different moves. And if uh, Fabiano plays e6, we are less lucky because only 26% we can get. But I don't know, let's prepare against g6, against the king's Indian defense, because it's very important to know what you do there. And I normally play g3. Fabiano plays bishop g7, bishop g2, then castles, castles, and the move. Yeah, here you actually have d5 and d6 because, well, there are a lot of different ways to go about it. d5 is a Grunthal defense, but let's say we rather want to prepare against the uh, King's Indian defense. And now my favorite line here, b3, the double fianchetta variation. And surprisingly enough, we see just one game Fabiana Carano played from this position, and that game was against me during our uh, World Chess Championship uh, game in Dusseldorf, the one I mentioned before. So we can just click on this game and see what happened there if I want to prepare and don't repeat my mistakes. But if, let's say, you are preparing against Fabiana Grand and you want to play the same line, then once again, you can use that game to prepare yourself and see what Fabiana did here. He played a5 and then tried to put some pressure on me on the queen side. And well, I actually didn't have that many problems up to the end game. That was a very fascinating game somewhere here. I'm going to put the reference to the video about this game. Very, very cool one for me. Once again, in terms of the emotions, it's, it's something incredible. That's probably the pinnacle of my chess career. Anyway, back to the uh, chess base. That is the way you prepare. Then you see what you do against this a5. And what can help you with that is this little online button. So you see here, this position being played online, uh, I mean, all of the games anybody have played that are in the mega database, basically pretty much all of the tournament games are there. And then you see what people played. So you see here the score, very important feature because I normally choose the move that has the highest score if it uh, aligns with my own preferences. So for example, here C4 seems, no. A4 is actually the biggest percentage, but if it's like one or two percent difference, it's not that important. I play here bishop b2 because that's the main line. And then, yeah, uh, Fabiano played here a4, and then you see what kind of moves uh, you can make here. C4, just grabbing the control of the center. No, Fabiano actually didn't play the move a4, but that is the main line, and you see what can happen here. You see that uh, Fabiano Carano played himself this exact position from the white pieces. And you can also sort it all the way you want, for example, according to the ELO. Then you see that Magnus Carlsen, well, Magnus has the highest ELO, obviously. So you see how he handles this position. By the way, he lost it. So maybe it's not such a great reference. But also very important to understand what you should not do in order not to lose the game starting from this variation. Or you can sort it from the year to see what people played recently. Maybe there are some new things in this variation. So that way you prepare. And of course, once you are done with the uh, King's Indian, with this bishop b2 variation, then you go back a little bit and see what to do against, uh, let's say, knight, knight to e6, uh, sorry, knight to f6 and e6. So when Fabiano plays here knight to f6, we play knight f3, and then he does play e6. What's going to happen in this case? What kind of percentages people get? Which move is better? You see that c4 definitely seems to be better against uh, Fabiano than bishop to f4. Of course, you might say, well, it's not that relevant. It's not like the third move decides the destiny of the game. And that is, of course, true. But sometimes there is some point and it's like uh, you understand what kind of positions Fabiano likes more, prefers more, gets better results in and which not. And of course, that applies not only to Fabiano, but uh, for any opponent you might get. And that is the way you prepare step by step. Then you take a look at those online games. And what you can also do is, of course, switch on the engine here. Here. You can uh, upload here any engines you want. Thank God the Stockfish is completely free. You can just go to the uh, Stockfish website. Here uh, you have Stockfish 16.1, that is the newest version. And here you can just download it into Windows or Mac, whatever you have, or even Android, and then upload it in, into the chess base and you're good to go. So yeah, let me upload it here. That is, by the way, one feature that you really want to get a rather stronger computer to be able to, to get use of this engine. So let me remove a few functions here so we have more space for the engine. Normally I have it on the, uh, on the bottom half, but it doesn't matter. So here you have the depth. 
It's very important that this step, like if you're analyzing the openings, I really recommend you have it at least on a 30 uh, level mark to make some kind of conclusions. Better 35 if you have time to wait for that, or if you have a very, very strong computer that does it much faster for you. Now, here you see the lines. That is the evaluation of the position. That is like the percentages that uh, you can get. Uh, in this position and what is new about Chessbase 17 or yeah the newest version is that it has some notations there not only like the computer evaluation plus uh, 0.3 maybe it's not that relevant for you but you see here the explanation in words as well white has an edge black plays a pawn lever c5 the d file opens with c takes d yeah maybe in this concrete position because it's just the beginning of the game that doesn't make that much sense but later on in the game, that's going to be very relevant. Let me let me make a certain position. So I have reached a certain position here where you clearly see that white is having the control of the center and most probably is better. Then you see the evaluation of the position. If you make the right move, then you can just use your cursor here to, to see the moves happening on the board. That's very useful. That is something you never had before. And you also see this body function, engine body. We have it here like a dog or wolf or whatever it is and that has those annotation here they have a certain meaning here i wasn't like that deep to, to understand what it actually means but as far as i know that is like an indication that that's the only move in the variation otherwise uh like if uh, white is not taken here on e5 he might get into trouble which is logical because like somebody took your pawn you should take it back so that is the way you go through the lines. You can, you can see everything like that. And then you see also the explanation in normal words instead of those uh, computer evaluations. Like white is better, black plays a pawn lever with d5, queen to f4, on move 16, restraints the knight on e4. And then you also see the threats here, like what kind of uh, threat exists in the position, like e5, bishop d6, castles, and then bishop b7, and basically the engine creates the position is equal. So that is uh, the danger for us as wide as we want to get some advantage. Then you also have this new kind of evaluation of the position with these colors. I mean, for me, it's looking too crazy. It's difficult for me to understand what's going on. Apparently, it's it's like uh, different colors mean different things. The green one is, for example, means that it's a strong piece, uh, yellow one that it's a weakness and so on. Like. I'm not that great uh, with colors anyway, so I, I'm not really using that function, but you do have this new functionality, new ways to understand uh, the evaluation of the position to, to interact with the computer. Like for me, I'm used to the computer evaluation my whole life and I don't really need anything new, but it's cool to have new ways to explore the evaluation of the position. For example, if the number itself doesn't tell you much, then the words, real words explanation might be more useful. So that is how you use the chess base to prepare against your opponents. You look for his games, what he is playing, what are the variations that might happen in the game. Then you take a look at the online feature to see what people are playing in those positions. And then, of course, you check all of that with the strong engine to well, get an objective evaluation uh, to help you understand what kind of uh, things are relevant in the position. And then you use that online feature again to understand what are the challenges people get in real games, because engine evaluation is one thing. It might be very easy to understand everything with the engine, but then when you're really starting to play that game, you realize like here is a thread, there is a thread, I don't know what to do, what's going on on the board, no idea. But if you really take a look at that practical examples, when you are using the online function, that helps you a lot. You can also use just the mega database as a reference instead of the online database. But online, I mean, you have the most the, the most recent variation, so why not to use it? Anyway, the second feature that most of the chess players are using chess base for is, of course, to analyze the game once you are at home after the game. You just want to take a brief look at what happened in the game. So you hit the board button and you have a completely new uh, game here and you start making the, the moves on the board. And then you're trying to understand why on earth you're such a weak chess player. Well, of course, you do that with the chess engine as well. But I have already shown you that. So to save you some time, let's get to the 
very cool feature which is available as far as I know since uh, Chessbase 16 and that is just a game changer in terms of how you learn the opening theory or how you train certain positions. So if you don't know yet, I have created a fantastic opening chess course, at least according to the reviews people are writing about it, to help you build a complete and holistic opening repertoire in just 10 days. And I have the PGN version of it, of course, as a database here, and you have all of the files we cover in the course and even much more than we cover in the video section of the course. By the way, there is a huge sale, so definitely take a look at it. There are free tutorials on the website that you can access right now absolutely for free, so definitely take advantage of that. And I guarantee you, once you watch that, you would want to, to do more. So yeah, take advantage of that. So anyway, you have here all of the files we cover, all the openings we learn in, inside of the 10-day opening mastery course. And then you can click on one of them. And you have here the replay training, kind of a magic button. Like 10 years ago, if somebody would show me it, I would say, you're crazy, That's, that should be illegal. You can actually learn here the openings because Yes, we, we learn those openings, we have those very long variations, we buy those courses and we go through it, and then the next week we have completely forgotten everything. Well, here you can just learn it, you make a move, and Black, well, the machine is making a move for uh, the opponent, and then you need to remember what kind of a move you actually need to make. The second one should be knight f3 in the Collie system, then you make the move e3, and the opponent is making uh, the moves for black here, that is the main line of the Collie system. And then you have a score here, like what kind of percentages you get. That way you can take a look at everything and um, yeah, just uh, understand wh which variations you know best, which variations you need to work on more, and you repeat it step by step until you remember absolutely everything. Of course, I always say it's not the most important thing to remember the certain variations because, well, it might be the case that your opponent plays something else and then you are lost. The most important thing is to understand the ideas and to master it. But that helps you as well just to remember, just to keep all of those ideas in mind. So. Bishop d3 is the next move, and then you play b3, and then you place your bishop on b2. Uh, no, you actually castle, yeah? You see? I'm not that uh, perfect either. I mean, both moves are definitely possible, but I guess I gave uh, castles in the course. And then I probably say that a3 is an important move. No, not yet. Because this bishop, uh, this knight, sorry, might come to b4 attacking the bishop on d3. Maybe now. Yeah, you see that knight d5 is a little bit more aggressive attacking the knight again, but uh, it says it also gives you the comments like you played a2, a3, this move is serious, so if you play this 3 it's not like a blunder or a mistake or something, it's a completely legitimate move. It's just that in the game, or in, in this case in the analysis you are working with, the move knight to e5 was given. But you can also use it to play as white, as black, you can use different features here and then you can try, yeah, finally it's the move a3, and then you see here the total points, I currently have 88%, and then you go on, proceed with it until you're done. I mean, that is a fantastic feature. That is what I'm using now to remember all of my uh, theoretical lines, because of course, the higher you become in chess, the more lines you have to remember, and that is a nightmare. I mean, I hate it about chess that you need to keep in mind so many lines, because sometimes if you just make one mistake in a certain incredibly sharp opening, you're just busted immediately. By the way, I tried my best to avoid that situation in, in the course, so it's all about the ideas and pretty much no variation when you have to specifically remember like those 20 moves variations one by one. That's not what you want. That's not uh, what you need to get uh, to get some fun uh, from chess. Okay, so that is how it works. Then the rook goes to f3 and then there is this checkmating plan with rook h3, f6, and then there is queen h5, just threatening to give a checkmate. Yeah, and that was one of the lines we learned in the course because basically that's a checkmate here, the king is not able to escape. It should be rook f1, and then I guess you just take it on f8. No, you're not. Well, it's actually a big mistake. You see, so you learn a lot in the process. I think bishop b5, yeah, bishop b5, exactly. Because then you take, and then you play queen to g6. No, not queen to g6. This is not so good because of King Yeah, you immediately see the explanation. That is what I like about it so much. OK, 
Okay, so let me solve it. Maybe queen g7. Then there is queen is7. And also take it. Okay, taken is great. And then you play queen g6. Yeah. So now we just take on a6 and finally give it checkmate. Yeah, so that is the way you learn the openings. I mean, that is really cool. Then you get your uh, your score and you can decide, well, best based on your overall statistics where, whether it's a good percentage for you or not, or maybe you need to repeat uh, the training. But it saves you so much time on learning and it gives you a direct indication which variations you know the best and which you need to work on more. Just just incredible stuff here. I really would be so happy to get it like 10 years ago. I guess I would achieve much more with my openings because to remember everything was always and always a huge, huge headache for me throughout my chess career. Anyway, let's proceed with other functions of the new chess base here. One thing that is completely new for chess base 17 is so-called beauty medals. You can find the most beautiful uh, games either in the entire database, but that to my eyes doesn't make that much sense but also for a certain player like like the best games of Hikaru Nakamura the best games of Robert Fisher for example for me it would be very useful to choose the best games to show to you the most incredible games but I'm wondering I actually never did it myself I wanted to save the life emotions for this video what is the most beautiful game I have ever played in my life so let us do it together and i'm gonna show you this game and hopefully remember it if it wasn't played like 20 years ago well i'm 25 so it shouldn't be that old anyway let me find myself of course it's not all of the games i have played it's just 300 actually there was some kind of a problem with my name that's why there are not all of my games in the chess base Okay, I need to choose all of the games from here. I need to copy it and then I need to create a new database. And very important, there is a new format that makes it all possible. Earlier, you always had a normal PGN format or CBH, but now Chessbase with Chessbase 17 made this to uh, the second version of CBH format and that makes all of the things, all of the new features possible. So let me. Let me call it my games, create a new database, and then I should be able to paste all of my games. Yeah, takes a little bit of time, but it's, yeah, once again, if you have a strong computer, that's relatively fast, and also that's just 400 games, not like 4 million, like in case of the mega database. And then what I should be able to do is to click on beauty here and just sort it according to the beauty. You see it has like either one medal or two or three medals here. And I have a bunch of games with three medals. Let's see the first one. Ah, okay, yeah. That game I remember it was last year in the tournament game. And what's really cool about it. There is a button here, the, this red a quadrat, which, which is called detect sacrifices. And then you immediately see the pictures where some sacrifices have been happening. So here after rook g1, I made, I started to make some incredible sacrifices. First of all, I played this move knight to g4, sacrificing that queen on g5, but you obviously cannot take it because of knight to f2 checkmate. So my opponent took on f8, queen takes, queen takes, and then knight to c6, yet another sacrifice. I'm playing e2, who goes to e3, and then queen takes g2, the second queen sacrificed in one game. I mean, that was a fantastic one. I have made a video somewhere here about it. Definitely take a look if you haven't seen it yet. You're going to learn so much about the Sicilian defense as well as uh, sacrifices because somewhere earlier in the game, I did sacrifice a rook for two pieces. So here, my opponent played b5, Jana Schneider, by the way, and she took here on b5, sacrificed the knight to take the rook on a7, and then I got this position. I have two pieces against the rook and two pawns. I mean, very, very instructive. Once again, since you recommend you take a look. But let me take uh, a look at the other games I played here. That is the game against Eric Hansen. Okay, very famous chess player. And apparently I wasn't that successful in it. Let, let me take a look at the sacrifices. C takes D, and then Black took here on a four, sacrificing an exchange, and then queen comes to h4. Yeah, that was definitely a very painful game for me. Knight is three, and I'm just completely busted here. I don't really remember that game because it wasn't the classical. It was 
blitz game, but feels like I was just I was just completely crushed here. 21. Yeah, you see here the score of the beauty, 21.6. So you see that it's not necessarily the games I have won beautifully, but I was the one uh, horribly losing there, but my opponent made some sacrifices, and so you can see all of those games here. It also might be useful when you're preparing against the opponent, and you want to see whether he gets a lot of those medals to understand whether he is rather an aggressive player, because of course it's about sacrifices, it's about combinations, uh, really uh, incredibly astonishing uh, great combinations. So if he has a lot of those medals, then it means he is very aggressive player and you need to take it into account and maybe prepare something more positional against him. If he doesn't have any medals, then it means he doesn't like to sacrifice and you rather want to yeah, go aggressively against him. And of course, you use chess base to uh, save all of the, your databases here, your opening databases, maybe uh, databases with some instructive games that you want to go through, some books in the PGN format, all of that is available inside of the chess base. Absolutely, you can use it for that purposes. Now, those are the big things that I, for example, consider important about chess base. Of course, there are some uh, small details like the style thing. You can choose the style you want to have. We yeah, actually quite like the white style here. Or uh, there is a new button if you if you analyze one of your games and then in the end of the day you want to continue the game. Like if you just do it here, then it seems like the game continued like that, but it wasn't the case. So what you need to do here is press this button, the dot, end of game, and then everything you have afterwards is the analysis. So for example, if my opponent would have taken the uh, the queen there, I would promote a new one, and then I have a checkmate here because this king is not too safe. Now, as you have seen how I used the chess base, the main features that are there in the new chess base version, I want to express my opinion whether you should get the chess base. I would say it depends on how serious you are about chess. If you really want to achieve a lot in chess if you plan to play a lot of OTB tournaments because mainly I would say chess base is for OTB tournaments. Of course you can play online, then copy your game in the PGN file, go to chess base, analyze it and so on. But well, you probably know you have that functionality in chess.com or on lead chess, so you can do that as well. But for OTB chess, for serious trainings, like this replay theme for example, it's, it's a real game changer and I enjoy it so much. But you need that if you are serious about chess. If you just enjoy playing online and you are not planning to, to achieve a lot or improve your uh, level hugely, then of course you are good to go without the expensive chess uh, base program. Because of course it's not the cheapest program available there for chess. Let me walk you through here. So the package I got from chess base to test it was this one, the Mega Package Edition 2024. Here you have the chess base itself and you have the Mega Database. You also have this 20, 12 months premium so that you get those new updates of the games and then next year you need to buy a little bit to get a new update. But that is the basic price, uh, 340 euros in my case. Well, it might be a little bit different in US dollars, but you get the point. If you want to get the, just the chess base 17 itself without any databases, that would be 190 euros. And if you want to get this version, which is a larger package with the big database, apparently it doesn't have like all of the games, but most of them, that would be 100 euros cheaper than this mega edition. So in the end of the day, that really depends on your personal preferences. If you want to get serious at chess, chess base might be a very useful tool for you, but you need to consider it carefully because of course it's not the cheapest program out there. If you are indeed interested in buying the chess base program, there would be a link in the description. That is the affiliate link, but it doesn't cost you anything to use it. And I would be very thankful for that because well, that's the way for me to produce more relevant and useful content for you. I hope you enjoyed this review. Feel free to ask your questions in the comments. I would be happy to answer it. And in this video, you're gonna see apparently the most incredible game I have ever played in my entire chess career according to chess.com beauty medals.